Welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of Victory as we celebrate the solemnity of the Nativity of the Lord. The Masses for the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, are next Saturday and Sunday at the regular weekend Mass times. As a kind reminder, we ask that you turn your cell phones to silent. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We're privileged gathered on this Christmas morning to celebrate the nativity of our God. So we worthily and faithfully come to God's presence, in the presence of each other. Let's call to mind our sins and ask for God's pardon and peace. I confess to all my May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
and let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created the dignity of the human race and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings, announcing peace, bearing good news, and announcing salvation and saying to Zion, your God is king. Hark, your centennials raise a cry. Together they shout for joy, for they see directly before their eyes the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord comforts his people. He redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. A reading from the beginning of the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in times past, God spoke impartial in various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us 
through the Son, who he had made heir to, of all things, and through whom he created the universe, who is the refulgence of glory and the very imprint of his being, and who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far as superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which the angels did God ever say, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Or again, I will be a father to him and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with a reading of the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him, nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and his life was the light of the human race. That light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came to give testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe in him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by man's decision, but of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory, the glory as the Father's own son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out saying, the one he, this was of him who I said, the one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. For his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace. Because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Once, before there was time, God spoke. Let there be. And when God pronounced that word, 
let there be, all things came into being. He separated the waters above the heavens from the water below the heavens. And in that sky, he fixed the stars and the sun and the moon. And then the firmament showed forth and separated the waters from dry land. And upon the firmament came all vegetation and all living creature. And then the word was spoken, and the highest pinnacle of creation came to be man, humankind, the human family. And for a long time, or a short time, whatever time there was, this creation was perfect. And God had spoken that word into a great void of chaos. And from that word, love spoke forth, and that love spilled itself out onto all of creation. And it was good. It was very good. And for a long time, or a short time, or for whatever time it was, all were in paradise and all were in harmony with God, our Creator. But then, but then the jealousy of the evil one tempted our first parents in that perfect garden, in that first covenant with God, and entered sin and death. And that which was perfect, that which was pronounced holy by the mouth of God, now became corrupt by the power of sin and death. And now St. Ignatius of Loyola tells us, if you read his spiritual exercises, he says, and at that moment when creation falls, the Trinity, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, they have to make a decision. What will they do with this paradise fallen? What will they do with this creation now corrupt? And so the Holy Trinity, the Father and the Son and, the, and, and God and, and the Spirit pronounce one more word. And St. Ignatius says this, they say, let us work the salvation of the human family. And now God speaks again. And this time, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. This time, the incarnation happened in the womb of a Virgin Mary. You see, the angel Gabriel was dispatched from that heavenly realm to Mary a virgin to be trove to a man named Joseph of the house of David, as she was a virgin. And he asked her, will you consent? Will you be the mother of God? Will you house the word of God in your very self? And Mary stared mystery deep, deep in the face and looked the angel in the eye and simply said, yes. Mary spoke her own word, be it done to me according to your will. And at that moment, the Word became flesh. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, became one of us. Jesus Christ made his dwelling here amongst his creation. Jesus Christ crafted himself in the flesh of his mother to elevate all human flesh to the dignity of the Godhead. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. In the beginning was that Word, and now that Word is seen. And then Mary and Joseph were summoned again, this time not by God or by an angel, but by a king, Caesar Augustus. They were told, you must go to be counted in the great census. So Mary and Joseph go to Bethlehem because there was a house in the lineage of David. And after they were there for the great census, it was time for a confinement to be complete. And now it was time to give birth to that word of God made flesh. There was no room in the inn so they go to a stable, and only thing gathered there were the animals. How appropriate that if the first creation, the, the beasts of the earth, were witness to the origin of man, so now in this second, in this new creation, it would also be the beasts that would, that would, weigh, that would lay witness to the origin of man's redemption. And in that stillness of that first Christmas night, God was born among us. God pitches his tent and dwells among us. You see, this is a miracle beyond miracles. In the infant lying there in the manger, you see God exposed. In the infant lying there in a manger, you see salvation, but you have to look deep and hard. God comes to us not with brute force, not with mighty power. He comes with the innocence of a child. And this child will be life of the world. 
this child will grow to give his salvation for all mankind. You see, in all other world religions, I don't care where you look, you'll always find them pursuing God. You have to seek nirvana, or you have to get into this, this pure emptiness, or you have to offer the right sacrifice in order to woo God on your side, but not in Christianity, not in our church, not in Catholicism. In our church, we know different. God seeks us. He became incarnate like us in all things but sin. He made his dwelling among us, and he came to be one of us. God seeking us. I will work the salvation of the human family from the inside out. You see, sometimes we just can't put our heads around that great miracle. Why would God do this? Why would God save us? It's because of that great act of his first love when God spoke. You see, Jesus gives his very self to us. You have to see it. The wood of the manger would turn into the wood of the cross. And the grown man, God, Jesus, would stretch out his hands between heaven and earth and die for our salvation. And when that one death and resurrection comes, sin and death is conquered and all of creation is redeemed. It's why the angels sing glory to God in the highest at his birth. It's why the shepherds come to pay adoration. That's why the magi will follow to worship this king, who is king of heaven and earth. You see, God will give his very flesh to us not just a baby, but his very body and blood, his very soul and divinity. Bethlehem, literally translated, means the house of bread. In his birthplace, that manger, for a man who was going to grow up to give his flesh for us to eat, how appropriate that he be born where the angels, where the, where the animals fed. And Emmanuel, God with us, the work of salvation of the human family. And here too, here too, that same work. God will give us his presence, his body and blood, his soul and divinity in the Eucharist that we receive. And if we want the salvation to come to us, we must be baptized and raised in our faith, nurtured in the sacraments, and receive the very presence of God dwelling with us. You see, it's our turn now to speak a word. It's our turn now to become a clear sign of Christ in the world. It's our turn now to make incarnate, to show the bodily form of Christ to all who see us, that all who see us will see Christ seeking them as well. The word we speak is amen. Amen. The body of Christ, amen. The blood of Christ, amen. It is the word we say because the only thing that we can possibly give back to God in gratitude for this incarnation is the very gift of himself. And in doing so, we offer the gift of ourselves. So this is why we've come on this early Christmas morning, to give ourselves back to God, to receive the body of Christ incarnate among us, and then to become the body of Christ. So that all of the world will see God seeking uh, them. And then, and only then, will the salvation of the human family be complete. In commemoration of this Christmas morning of the incarnation of God, we profess our faith when we reach those words and, and became man, we will stop and pause and kneel for a moment of silence. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God
For our sake, he was crucified and punished as Pilate. He suffered death in the spirit and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He had ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. Who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism and forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection again, the life of the world to come. On this Christmas morning, let us acknowledge the presence of God among us and offer, him, and offer to him our needs. For the church, may Jesus be ever born in our hearts, prompting us to recognize him in our neighbor, leading us to works of mercy and generosity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the angels' glad tidings of peace come to fruition from war-torn areas of worlds to, to areas of our nations beset by violence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our for those who do not have a home of their own to sleep in tonight, may they find room in a place that is warm, safe, and welcoming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are grieving the loss of a loved one and find this season especially difficult, may they find hope and consolation in God's tender care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, may we be reminded of God's magnificent gift of our Savior and Redeemer every time we celebrate the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Deacon Jerome Kotzer and for all the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs listed in our parish intention book and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord God, who comes among us, and one like us in all things but sin, hear now the needs we make, for we offer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day, when you manifest the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and ever to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this all-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he's begun to exist in time, so raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation, and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we, first, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, to be pleased to grant you her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Britain, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and all the Catholic <coughs> and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, of the offering for themselves and for all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day, of which the Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth to save the world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the Mother of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul Andrew, James and John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Lydus, Cletus, Clemus, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogasus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask their merits and prayers, and all things we be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the sublation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and count among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, <coughs> and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer your glorious majesty for the gift that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as well as you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offerings of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hand of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation of the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us in the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, through those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Amidst we beseech you in their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grace you grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be freed from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but in the faith of your church, and grace you grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other a sign of peace.
and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of you should be to my but I will not say the word and I will not say the word.
Let us pray. Grant, O oh merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world, born this day, is the author of divine generation for us, so may he be an ever greater, so, so he may be the greater even in immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So on behalf of myself and Father Dalton and Deacon Matthew and all of us at the cathedral, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. I hope today and the eight days of Christmas that follow for us will be one of great joy and great wonder and great surprise, as you can see as a gift for the first time, Emmanuel, God with us. So Merry Christmas. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by the glorious birth has illumined this most holy day, drive far from the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. May God, who will that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced to the shepherds by the angels, fill your minds with gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. And may God, who by the Incarnation brought together the earthly and the heavenly realm, fill you with the gifts of his peace and favor, and make you shares with the, with the church in heaven. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace, our Mass is in you. Thanks be to God.